Hey, you're watching I Allegedly, and I'm Dan. I've got a good one for you. Just walking through the park in Costa Mesa. And uh, man, oh man, we're hearing about all these people in trust that we're supposed to respect and have confidence in protecting us, stealing from people right now. So, a lot to cover. You know, you know what to do, like, subscribe. We just had an email go out, guys, so if you're on the list, check your spam filter, because one just went out. And uh, today we have a sponsor, Patriot Gold. But, uh, you know, let's get right into it, guys. First things first, um, Patrick Hemingway is a police officer in uh, New Brighton and Glastonbury in uh, the uh, Connecticut area. This guy went out and was charged with 30 different burglaries. And the way that this guy would do it, which was absolutely amazing, was he was a cop and he would use the uh, police computer to look people up and basically be deceptive so that nobody would find him. But he would be able to go in and lock pick safes and break into people's homes based on you know, existing crime and existing reports that were out there and what people talked about, what they had. And eventually, another police officer suspected this guy and said, hey, I think this guy's the guy that's doing it. So, I mean, this is basically a TV movie of the week, but this guy stole so many, from so many people. I mean, it's unbelievable. This guy's gonna go to jail for a very long time. But again, a cop that we're supposed to trust, that was caught stealing from us. Absolutely unbelievable. Then, you know, one thing for those of you that are new here, this channel was started, uh, you know, during the health crisis where I help get people, you know, PPP loans, EIDL loan grants for their business, everything, you know, and as far as money and, and access to money during that time. Broward County has sheriffs that went out and falsified PPP loan applications. And you can say, oh, what, did five or six of these people do it? No, how about this? They say on the low end, it's 50. On the high end, it's 70 people, 70, that went out and lied and falsified these uh, PPP forms and got themselves tens of thousands of dollars they were never entitled to. Now, here's the thing about this. These governmental watchdogs and these agencies and the watchdog that reported this, they're finally getting caught up to this stuff, guys, where they're finally saying, hey, wait a second, why did these people get this? Because here's the thing about this. If you work for anybody, and I, I just had a nurse that came to me and said, you know, it was terrible. We were supposed to get all this hero pay and all this extra money, you know, during this time. Can you figure out how much these people got? And there are websites where you can go to, you can search Procopia and all these other places that uh, can tell you who got what as far as PPP loans. You just need to know the name of the business, what the legal name is, and start from there. But these individuals that applied for this, people don't think that they're on a database. And guess what? You're on that database. So they're already starting to call these people into court. They're already starting to charge these people. And these officers are going to go down for the count, just like the guy, you know, think about the the guy that stole from the houses that broke into safes and used safe cracking equipment and went online and bought uh, materials to break into safes you know it's funny there is a guy on TikTok called the lock picking lawyer who shows you how to break into stuff not that he's trying to teach you to do this just people send him like hey this lock is you know you cannot steal from us you cannot break into this lock and he will do it in seconds in under a minute he does all this stuff when he records it, it's absolutely fascinating. But th this guy bought stuff online, went out, and used his own name when he purchased things because he's an imbecile, and uh, went out and stole from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. So wild that that guy did that. And then the cops that got PPP loans, ah, oh, nobody's gonna care, no one's gonna find out, but just our taxpaying dollars being squandered. And then, uh, last guy, Michael Davies, this guy, was, uh, he, you know, he was in trust because he worked for uh, Wells Fargo Bank. This guy stole a million dollars, one million dollars from people. Basically, the elderly and uh, people that were less fortunate may have got a financial windfall, just dipped into their accounts, and as a, um, as a manager had access to everything, and, uh, you know, one lady had $560,000, and this guy would write himself cashier's checks, he would 
pay bills online, just pay himself money, do transfers, get cash out of other people's accounts. And they had to go back and, uh, um, you know, retrace the steps for all this stuff. And it's absolutely fascinating because this guy, this guy got convicted. This guy's going to get sentenced on January 2nd of 2024. But man, oh man, this is just awful that this stuff is, is being abused like this. I have had so many people send me stories and send me, hey, listen, this coffee house has three and four people that work there. They say they have 61 employees. They're going to get caught, guys. They're going to get caught. You can speed up the process if you don't like these people. That's without a doubt. But they're going to get caught because they're going to review each and every one of these people because their E9s or I9s, whatever they call that form that has the, uh, you know, the payroll on it that we have to submit to the government and you know, for the state that you're in, regardless of what state you're in, they want to get their unemployment you know, insurance and compensation. All that stuff is being found out right now, and these people are going to get caught eventually, and they're going to have questions. Now, I had a lot of people write me during this time and say, hey, my PPP loan was uh, considered invalid, and they want the money back. And I'd be like, oh, well, you know, if you don't qualify, you didn't qualify. If you mis made a misstatement, you know, they're very kind that they're doing this to you and not prosecuting you. Well, I spent the $228,000. I spent the $64,000. $88,000 was one of them. I mean, guys, this is crazy, but they're coming after these people right now. So do you know of anybody else that got these scams? I, I've seen all the guy that bought the Ferrari, the guy that made the rap songs, all that stuff. We've talked about all that stuff, but cops, 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 cops doing this. That's horrible. And this watchdog group, read the story because it's fascinating. The watchdog group is not going to tolerate it. These people are getting caught and there's going to be problems. Let me know what you think. Let's talk about our sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. With the instability in the world, you have to look at gold right now. Over the last week, gold shot up almost 5% in one week. One of the biggest moves we've seen in months. Do you think the world's going to be less stable or more stable in the coming months? I'm voting with less stable, so I'm betting on gold. You can do yourself a favor and you can call Patriot Gold today at 888-330-1431 and get their free investor guide. They will show you how precious metals that have stood the test of time will be there again for us. Please call them today or use the link below. Let them know that I allegedly sent you. Do what central banks are doing. You know, do what rich people are doing, do what banks are doing. They're protecting themselves and getting themselves backed by precious metals. Do it today, 888-330-1431 and find out how Patriot Gold, who has been number one rated for seven years in a row, can help you and your family with your retirement and securing your future. Call them today. Here's a fascinating stat for you, actually a couple of them. Right now, people are putting more money down on houses than ever before. And in 2023, we saw the average down payment from a year ago go up 187%. Wow. Now, the thing about this, when you live in an area like Southern California and you've got the average house well over 800 grand, you're not seeing that. You're seeing some areas where the average down payment is you know almost doubling in some of these smaller areas where houses are still under five hundred thousand dollars crazy 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 not everybody can afford this not everybody can handle you know a down payment with a seven percent mortgage seven plus percent a friend of mine on facebook posted this picture he works in commercial construction he does everything from framing to concrete work to everything this is a brand new house and I'm not making this up. Look at this. I'm going to block out his name so you don't have connections with him. But this is a real picture from a real job site that somebody did. Think about that. Is that insane? Look at that. Look at, get a good look at that. That is unbelievable, guys. That's new construction. They're going to cover that with, you know, plywood, sheathing, put some shingles on it. And guess what? You can't see it from my house. So, oh, really? You got a problem? Oh, there's an earthquake or, oh, there's shifting or oh wow that guy uh you know walked on your roof okay uh oh he fell through what do you know 
you're going to see major problems with this with these new builders that are nothing but a mess right now. This is horrible. This is absolutely the sign of the times right now when it comes to construction. So get ready, guys. You know, you're paying for this. You're paying more than ever for these houses and you're getting ripped off and stolen from because the quality is substandard. But hey, it's a major home builder. Not gonna say the name of this home builder because I don't wanna get sued, but the problem with it, with these people that are doing this, it's a mess. It's absolutely a mess. They should be ashamed of themselves. They're trying to buy down interest rates. You're paying, now one more time. You're paying for this, guys. Is that awful? Okay, wow. Another thing, talking about the trust and how people are ripping us off, Colquitt, uh, Colquitt County in Georgia, Moultrie is the name of the city. They're having such a problem with mail theft and check washing. That's where you take somebody's existing check and you change who it's written to. Getting to the top of the hill where all the ducks are and geese are at. So think about this. The Sheriff's Department says that they are having, think about this number, a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars a week in bad checks being reported. I'm telling you guys, don't let people mail you money. Don't. Think of something else. Have a lockbox. Have a way of getting your mail secured to where somebody doesn't have to touch it. Or go pick it up from the post office. That's what I would do. I would I would have a P.O. box and have it not leave the post office. You know, that's still not safe because it's funny. I've had the same post office box since the 80s guys okay and they used to, used to be open 24 hours a day you could walk in there but then some degenerates walked in there with crowbars and start peeling people's boxes open and stole safes and things like that and i just get floored by that 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 that's the level of crime right now but think about this one bank in georgia has had think about this well over a hundred million dollars in bad checks written 150 million to be exact. Is that crazy, guys? But this is all these people doing this just month after month, week after week, stealing. And again, if they get away with that, they're just going to continue to do it. So it's really nice up here. This is a good spot. You know, this is in Costa Mesa, T. Winkle Park near the airport. Kind of nice. Peaceful, but you can hear the airport clearly in the background. But man, oh man, you know, it's, it's, dangerous to be a postal carrier. I've had more postal carriers write me right now and say, you know, you have no idea the amount of work. Uh, they added my husband, who used to work Monday through Friday, they added, they added two Saturdays without any additional pay. Without additional hours, without additional anything. Just, hey, you're gonna deliver on Saturdays. And some, sometimes what they're doing with these people is they're making him like if a guy was a supervisor inside the post office, oh no, you're gonna deliver mail every other Saturday. Huh, okay. I generally don't do that. I haven't done it in 18 years. Well, you're going to do it now. So again, levels of trust that we have that are being just completely destroyed. Now you can't, you know, I know what you're going to say. You can't blame the post office. You've got to have a lockbox. All the things that you have to do to deter crime, you have to do it right now. You have to have cameras on your property. You've got to have, you know, Things like that that you can refer to so that no one will steal from you because they're going to if they're given the opportunity to. You know, just a matter of time. Let me know if you've experienced this. Let me know if your business has been affected by this. You know, you know lately I've had, you know, more scams tried to be put on me. And uh, the thing, you know, with my late girlfriend who has been dead since last year, the things that come through her accounts and things like that, it's shocking, unbelievable that they do this. And again, if you were unsuspecting or you weren't paying attention, you'd fall victim to this too. So I don't, you know, I don't sit there and begrudge the people that were stolen from at all because they, uh, you know, they're just victimized. But nothing is worse than, hey, we mailed your check on Tuesday and you're like, God, we need that eight grand, we need that eight grand. And then somebody, oh, the check got cash. What do you mean you didn't get it? That's what's happening, guys. So. They change the recipient, they can wash checks, they can do, they can electronic uh, deposit it, they can put it into one account and then transfer it to another. Hey, well, you know, Citibank, let me know who you put this into. No. Speaking of Citibank, Citibank's got a real problem. Uh, Jane Frazier, the, uh, um, the uh, CEO, she just announced the biggest overhaul in that company in decades. 
And what they're going to do is think about this. They're going to get rid of five levels of management at Citibank, five levels of management. So, you know, your manager, you have a manager, your manager has a manager who has a manager who has a manager who has a manager and then reports to corporate. Is that insane? So, you know, we need to make money again. We need to be profitable again. Yeah, let's get rid of five le uh, levels of management. When you hear that and you say you you hear that they're cutting back, it's about time. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. Next thing is there's a big push to have um, rent control. And everybody's like, oh, rent control is going to save everything. All the articles that I found on this, and you got to read the ones that are attached, have talked about how rent control has completely destroyed certain areas. And people think, oh, this is going to be the savior to save us all, and they won't be able to raise the prices. No. What it's done in like New York City, it's made it so that there are no apartments available. Think about this. You need to make under $47,700 to qualify for some of these units. And guess what? Because you have friends or you have family that have had the unit and you take it over from Aunt Joni who passed away, you know, eight years ago, uh, you're getting the unit. Some of these people make 150 grand a year and they're still in, living in the rent control units. So what they're talking about, and there's a great article below talking about how this will destroy real estate as we know it. It's going to make it so that there will be no more rentals. You will have small landlords that will sit there and say, we can't, don't want to do this. We don't want to never be able to evict this person. We don't want to, you know, have to be beholden to them. We want to run a business. And that's what you're seeing, um, you know, people get fed up with. So share your thoughts on this. You know, the idea of California and not being able to raise rent and things like that is uh, uh, interesting. You know, we have a law here. I believe it's 10%. You can't raise the rent more than a year and, uh, you know, can't kick somebody out like if they rent a place to live for a year um, that you can give them 30 days they live longer than a year and they live two years you have to give them 60 days and the other thing is if somebody wants to remodel a building uh, you have to give them uh, the 60 days if they're going to do that hey mr squirrel he's coming up for food share your thoughts on this stuff though guys There are times that I am sent things that are so preposterous. I'm like, this has got to be fake. This is just who would make something this stupid up. Now, this one is from the FDIC with support of the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau. You know, they're there to help us. They're, this is to let you know what to do. You know, look at this. This is a cartoon. Know your risks. Okay. FDIC, they paid for this campaign. This is a campaign to show you that there are financial risks in not having your money in a financial institution that's not backed by them. And you need to understand what it's like when you're unbanked and you don't have a bank account. I am telling you people, if you are one of the people that is what they call unbanked or you have financial apps only, go to second chance banks that will give you a loan. If you have a business and for some reason your checking account got closed, you wrote bad checks, you were overdrawn, whatever, and you had to make amends and make a deal with it. There are places that will help you get an account. They will put restrictions on you, but look at that. But this is insane that, hey, know your risks. Like it's a party on this stuff because, you know, the FDIC is a joke right now. They're, they're not protecting anybody. It's a cartoon. It's absolutely ridiculous. So know your risks, guys, okay? We're just raising awareness, Dan. You need to understand that and you need to not steer people clear of this. Oh, okay, thank you, appreciate it. I think it's ridiculous. One area in the country where rent went down in the calendar year of 2023, name it. And then when I tell you the city, you're gonna go, oh yeah, that makes sense, Oakland. Oakland went down 7.2% on an average. And the city of Oakland says the reason for that is we built so much housing. Think about this. Crime is so bad in Oakland. It is a war zone. It is awful. They have a professional baseball team, the Oakland A's, that cannot get 3,000 people to a game for a myriad of reasons. The fact, you know, the fact that the team sucks doesn't contribute to it. Think about this. They had more people show up for opposing teams 
then showed up for the Oakland A's. And you wonder why they're moving to uh, Vegas. There's that. And also, they built nothing but apartment buildings. They built so many apartments, it's unbelievable. Only problem is, is that these high rises and things that they have at $3,000, $4,000 a month, the average person in Oakland cannot afford. So that's the problem with this, is that you have people paying through the nose to live in certain areas that they cannot afford. If you guys remember, two, two and a half years ago, I met a homeless guy named Harvey whose house burnt down and he was homeless and he was disgusted because as he lived above a freeway overpass, he pointed at the one bedroom apartments next to him that were $3,400 a piece that were considered low income housing. Okay? So think about this. If you are at 28%, which is where you should be with your rent for your income, eh, you know what? You should be basically making 12 to 15 grand a month. Why would you live in downtown Los Angeles or downtown Oakland for that matter if you're making twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month? Please share your thoughts with me on all this stuff, okay? Oh, and by the way, did you guys see that? You know, isn't it great? The FDIC is out there to protect us. Mr. Squirrel's begging for food right now. I gotta gotta give him food. I'm gonna finish this video with these last couple stories. And uh, first things first, Jeff Bezos, think about this one. The rich are gonna be just fine during this time. You and I are gonna struggle, you and I are gonna have to make financial decisions. And some are going to be tougher for others than they will be for guys like this. This guy, you know, wanted to build a bunker in Florida to have more protection, so he bought the house next door to his for $79 million, $79 million. So, you know, billionaire bunker, guys. Gotta have a break between me and the rest of the world. So if I can buy the one on the other side too, I'm gonna do that too. $79 billion. Wow, okay? Final thing is Netflix. Netflix did a test earlier this year where they were going to have a retail establishment, have a restaurant, Netflix Eats, Netflix Bites. And uh, the only problem was it was started, the one I was invited to was in LA right after the writer's strike started. And my daughter said, listen, if this thing has any picketers out in front and anybody's angry about this, we're not going inside. And that's exactly what happened. So we went out and filmed a TikTok and said, have a nice day, that's that. Netflix had such a good response from that that they're gonna open up retail stores and restaurants and eateries and experience centers uh, that will be open between now and 2025. Okay, well, did anybody go and eat at Netflix Bites or Netflix Eats or whatever they called that restaurant? Because, you know, Disney's been doing this forever and then Disney fell on its own sword in the last couple years. Plus, you guys want to get something? They're, they're raising the price of certain yearly passes, but they are giving away kids passes for basically 50% off right now so you can get your kids in and you can pay more but uh, they're just having a real difficult time getting people there. So, do, do you care about this? Netflix lost its luster with me when they just threw, you know, every week there was, you know, nine new shows and you just don't know how to decipher them. So, share your thoughts on that. Once again, check your email because an email just went out. And if you'd like to join the email list, here's the simplest way to do this. Open up your cell phone and take a picture of this. And as you start to take a picture, you can log in and join our email list. You don't want to miss that. We've got discounts and all this cool stuff, all these great announcements that will be announced in the email first before they're announced in the channel. So thank you one and all for being here, onward and upward. Again, anything you guys want to send me, send me the, uh, um, send me, uh, the stories at hello at iallegedly.com. Onward and upward, guys. I'll see you guys very soon.